You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we're going to answer this question that came to us by Teresa, which says, do muscles push or pull? Well, they didn't exactly ask that question. She's very aware that muscles uh, only do pulling, but she needs some clarity when it comes from it. So she asked this question. She says, hi, Rick, I am reviewing the skeletal muscle section of the CES textbook, the Corrective Exercise Specialist. And she says, that's what I do for fun on vacation. LOL. Ah, well, I'm with you. Uh, I still sometimes get tripped up with contralateral muscle function. Muscles can't push. They can only pull. So, for example, how do the external obliques create contralateral rotation? How does my right side external oblique rotate me to my left side? Does that mean that they would rotate away from the muscle that is firing? Uh, this is a really good question. So when it comes to the sliding filament theory, that answers the push or pull question. So you think about the sliding filaments. We've got the actin and the myosin and the cross bridges. And when the muscles contract, muscles shorten. Those filaments slide across each other and they shorten. And a muscle filament goes from sarcomere to sarcomere, and those Z, uh, Z lines shorten across those uh, sarcomeres. And when they relax, they lengthen. So all muscle contraction is when these muscle fibers slide over each other and they basically, they're pulling. Now, what they don't do is they don't forcefully push away from the top of each other and move away from each other. They only slide over each other. And that's what we refer to as a pulling. They only pull. Those fibers don't move away from each other and push with resistance away. They lengthen, but they lengthen eccentrically. They don't forcefully push away from each other. All right. So that allows us to better understand that, yes, there's such thing as um, only pulling that takes place within the muscle. So muscles pull when they contract. And so take, for instance, my finger. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, that you're listening to this, then you'll see that I've got a brace on the middle finger of my left hand. And that brace occurred due to a jujitsu accident after I'd taken three weeks off a, a vacation with my family in Japan. And then I landed and did laundry in New York, and the very next day, I flew right back out to the Idea World Fitness Conference in Los Angeles, and then I came back, and I was like, I need to get my roll on, and I went to jiu-jitsu class, and there was a guy there, I'd never seen him before, I don't know who he is, and he was like, you want to roll? And I was like, yeah, I want to roll. And so we start rolling, that's a sparring, jiu-jitsu sparring talk. And I grabbed his lapel on his gi, the, the little suit that you wear, and he got me with something that I'm not used to, which is simply he broke my grip. He grabbed two hands on where I was holding and yanked my hand off of his lapel. And it felt like the tip of my finger was left inside of his shirt. It hurt so bad. And usually I like when people try to break my grip because I just let go. And now they have two hands on one of mine, which leaves the other hand available for me to do an attack. But I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. And it didn't hurt as bad when we were rolling. So we kept going for the next two minutes. We finished our session. It was when I went to go with the next person that I went to grab them. And it felt like a nail going through that tip of my finger right there at that distal interphalangeal joint, the very end of my finger. And then I looked at it. And when I looked at it, I couldn't extend that joint. It was like a, like a creepy witch finger. It was like it only flexed at the very, very end of the finger. And I was like, ooh, that's not right. And then the professor came over, the, the jiu-jitsu coach, and he was like, what happened? I showed him, I was like, man, my finger hurts so bad. And he lifts his hand up and shows me his hand. And all of his fingers look like that. And I was like, I get it, but I don't want that for me in my life. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to let this heal. and I'm going to take some time off. So I've got a, a brace on my finger for the next four to six weeks. Doesn't mean I won't be doing jujitsu, but 
I will be braced for the next four to six weeks because my client ER physician looks at it and he goes, it appears to be a torn extensor tendon. And so I am braced in hyperextension because the muscle that attaches to that tendon cannot shorten enough to make up for the lengthening that is taking place on that tendon. So the shortening, the muscle on the extensor digitorum pulls me into extension. And there are muscles on the other side of my hand that pull me into flexion. So the muscle action is the same. It is always a sliding filament where those muscle fibers slide over each other. But depending on where the muscle is on the joint depends on how it pulls that muscle and creates, a, sorry, how it pulls that joint to create a joint action. So let's go into the question about the obliques. Because when you pointed it out, and you were correct, external oblique does opposite side or contralateral rotation. So I've got my muscles, and you can you can kind of look at my, my internal obliques and my external obliques. And my internal obliques do same side rotation, which means if I'm my muscle on my right side will rotate me to my right. But the muscle on my left side, because of the oblique angle, when it shortens, it rotates the opposite way. So I'm going to just show you in this little video real quick right here. So you can see the lengthening of this green thing. You can also see it in the, the wrinkles in my shirt here. But as I rotate, this shortens. And as I rotate back, it lengthens. So the muscle fiber for my, my internal and external obliques, my external obliques are running this way. And as I rotate away from my right side, if I rotate to my left, you see the muscle fiber of this little band that I have in my hand. You see how it shortens. Well, muscle fibers shorten, and that's how rotation occurs. So if I rotate to my left side, my right external oblique is working and my left internal oblique is working. So why that explains why when you get up and you do crunches with a rotation towards one side, and you're like, I'm trying to work my obliques on this side, but I feel like I feel it on the other side too, and I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe my body doesn't fire right. It's not doing the right things. No, it's doing just fine. The internal obliques on one side, it'll, ro let's say you're, you're rotating to your left, Internal obliques on your left side rotate it toward the left, and external obliques on your right side rotate you to the left also. It just depends on the angle of the fiber and how it pulls. So like my sternocleidomastoid, again, here in this picture, you can see this muscle right here, my SEM. So this SEM goes from my sternum my clavicle right here to the mastoid process. And as I rotate, so this is my right side muscle. As I rotate to my left, it shortens. Rotate to my left, the right side muscle shortens. Well, this side is lengthening over here. So if I want to stretch this SEM, I actually have to really fire the SEM on the other side. It's active stretching. Pets on the front of create a pushing movement, but the muscle fibers slide over each other. The delts are a good example because they do so much. The anterior delts, they shorten and the muscle is pulling, but the ones on the front create a pushing movement. The muscles on the back, they pull also the muscle fibers themselves, but the joint action is a pulling motion versus the pushing motion on the other side. So muscles only pull. The sliding filament theory indicates that they only pull. It just depends on where they are on a joint and what type of joint that defines what that joint action looks like and whether or not that is a pushing or a pulling. Pushing is getting something away usually from the front of us and pulling is moving something closer to us. So with that, I hope that kind of makes sense and we didn't get lost in the weeds there. But the, the muscles are very specific in what they do. And I tell people all the time, muscles, muscles are dumb. They, all they do is contract and relax. All they do is sliding filament and then release. 
they slide and shorten and then they get longer and and it is how we coordinate that movement and how that muscle aligns on joints and how those joints stack up on top of each other that give us these amazing degrees of freedom with a means of locomotion where muscle fibers only create a pulling movement. It's pretty fascinating. Anyway, uh, Teresa, I hope you found this helpful. And y'all, I hope you found it interesting. I appreciate you for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. And if you want to reach out to me, you can do so. Hit me up. Uh, you can email me at rick.richie at nasm.org. Or you can hit me up on Instagram or threads at dr.rickrichie. Y'all keep inspiring people to fitness. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.